Hey guys, what is going on? It's Jack here from Nothing But Tech. I'm in New York on a client shoot, so I decided let's rent out some space and shoot my OnePlus 5 review. I've been using the phone for about three weeks, so I definitely have had a lot of time with it. I know a lot of other reviews have come out, so in this review, I wanna focus on less so specs and more so what you're actually gonna notice using the phone on a daily basis like I have. So I hope I cover some stuff that you might have missed and uh, help you make your buying decision. Let's get into it. Before I get into this review, I want to state the obvious about the OnePlus 5 and something that I just need to get off my chest before getting into it. The OnePlus 5 looks extremely similar to the iPhone 7 Plus in a multitude of ways. The finish, chunky forehead and chin, center logo, and dual cameras in the left of the phone make it undeniably similar. The software for that dual camera system and the name Portrait Mode also are a complete ripoff, but honestly, I don't really mind that. I think it's actually a good thing. Let me explain. Consumers are so used to seeing the iPhone 7 Plus, it's so well marketed and it's one of the most popular smartphones that the fact that this actually looks like it, it's a good thing, I think. I was using this out in public and a lot of people said, oh, you have the matte black iPhone 7 Plus? And I was like, no, it's an Android smartphone actually made by a company OnePlus, a little bit smaller in the game, really cool smartphone. And they were like, oh, how much is it? When I told them the price, which is significantly cheaper than the iPhone 7 Plus, they were blown away. They said to me, wow, so it has a really stylish build like the iPhone, it feels great, and has a really similar camera system. And they were kind of sold on it and definitely were considering it. So I think that it's actually a good thing that OnePlus picked a design that feels great in the hand and also looks similar because it's gonna help them get their name out there for general consumers that might want an iPhone but wanna pick up something cheaper. So I don't think it's a bad thing and I think that they copied the good stuff from Apple. So I'm not necessarily disappointed uh, I don't love the big front bezels. I understand that they're a smaller company, but I'm not in love with those big chunky bezels. When I compare it to my S8 Plus, it just, it feels so big. I'll talk more about this in a second. Just talking a little bit more about the build, it feels really great in the hand. It is a little bit slippery though, which I'm definitely not a fan of. With most metal phones, they always have a slipperiness to them, so I guess you could put on a skin or something, but I do find myself dropping it a lot, which I'm not a fan of, luckily. It doesn't look like I have, so I guess that's a good thing. Durability gets my thumbs up. Not sure what I was doing there. So it looks like a pretty standard smartphone with the curves and the matte black paint job, but something that's unique to OnePlus made an appearance again. On the left side of the phone, you'll find an alert slider, which can be used to toggle between different notification modes. I'm a huge fan of this implementation, and it works seamlessly with the software. As I already said though, the front bezels are something that I'm not a fan of. They just feel so larger. I know we've only had two smartphones with a really good screen to body ratio that are popular, but I'm used to it now. I've been using the S8 Plus for a while, so I'm not in love with those bezels. There's nothing we can really do about it though. If you haven't used a phone like the S8 or the G6, you probably won't care that much. But for someone that used both of them as my daily, I definitely care a little bit. The screen that those bezels surround is actually pretty good. It's a 1080p panel with really solid viewing angles and nice colors. Some users have reported a jelly effect with the phone, which I'll link below if you haven't heard of it yet. I haven't actually seen it on my unit, but I know that sometimes the screen appears a little bit weird on camera, uh, which I haven't had with other phones, but I don't actually see anything when I'm just looking at it. The panel looks really solid to me. Speaking of scrolling and performance as a whole on the OnePlus 5, it's been really solid. The spec list on this phone, just quickly going over it, is really impressive for the price. My model has six gigabytes of RAM in comparison to the more expensive eight gigabyte of RAM model, but for $479, I've, and in general, I've really had zero issues. I think that six gigabytes of RAM is more than enough. So let's talk about the rest of the specs though. The phone has a Snapdragon 835 chip and an Andrino 540 GPU. Apps are quick to load, games run like butter, and smooth software animations add to the experience. I haven't had one drop frame or stutter through my whole 21 days with it. I think that this is due in part to the software. Oxygen OS is incredibly smooth and stock-like. You can switch between on and off screen buttons, and you can also add widgets to the shelf on the left of the screen, and then some other things like a gaming do not disturb mode. The overarching theme here is that OnePlus has created a software experience that stock Android lovers will really like, but they've also added a lot of enhancements to make the user experience better as a whole. And OnePlus's software has always been one of my favorites, and I just think that the few things that they added this year have just added to it. So this is one of the only phones where I don't feel it's necessary to add like Nova Launcher or something 
everything. I'm so happy with the software experience on this phone, and I think that it's one of the big selling points of it. Continuing with software though, the camera app is another straight ripoff of the iPhone 7 Plus, but let's talk about the camera app and the cameras. The OnePlus 5 is packing two different cameras varying in focal length and aperture. The 36 millimeter closer lens has a narrower aperture, meaning that it lets in less light, and it also won't do as well for creating a bokeh effect or a shallow depth of field. However, you still will be able to get that bokeh effect because the 24 millimeter lens has an amazing f1.7 aperture, meaning it does a lot better in low light and it also pulls a lot more light in for the shallow depth of field shots. It's a similar setup to the iPhones in terms of the focal length and the varying aperture and stuff, and also in terms of what they're used for. Before we get into how they work together and the unique feature that they have with working together, I wanna to talk about the image quality that they both produce individually. Photos from both cameras look sharp, colorful, and saturated. Both sensors also have a great dynamic range. Where you will spot the difference is in low light. The wider aperture on the main lens leads to substantially better looking photos with noticeably less grain. The second lens is great for getting closer to a subject without physically moving or digitally zooming in. So zooming in is great, but the main feature of this camera is definitely its role in portrait mode. Portrait mode is OnePlus's attempt to create a DSLR-like blurry background, and I think that they do an okay job. I'm not necessarily sure that that would be like a selling point like they're saying it is. They put it twice in the box, but I don't think that you should buy this phone for the portrait mode. It's really not that great, but let's discuss. I'll show you guys some examples, and you can let me know what you think in the comments. I wasn't disappointed, but I definitely was not impressed. It works best on simple lines, and it works the worst with busy backgrounds and curves in the subject. When it works well, it will create beautiful shots like this, and when it doesn't work well, you will see where the change between the subject and the background is, and it looks choppy and unnatural. It's a nice feature to have, but I think that it's still really in beta mode, kind of just how the iPhone 7 Plus was. iPhone 7 Plus was terrible in the beginning, and it got a lot better. I think that OnePlus has a lot to improve on here, especially with differentiating the subject from the background with those lines. It just looks really unrealistic, so hoping as software updates come, it gets better. Right now, I think it's like a solid six out of 10. It's not terrible, but I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it. I don't think I'll ever use it. I think that the iPhone 7 Plus is better just with handling edges of objects and stuff. It's not really great either, but I think that since OnePlus just came out with this, they'll definitely improve it. And I think six months from now, it could be a really awesome feature that I use a lot. I'm also thinking about doing a comparison between this phone, the 7 Plus and the S8. Uh, like I did with the G6. So let me know with a comment down below if you wanna see that. But let's move on to battery life. And that's definitely where OnePlus did not do an amazing job. I'd never made it past 5.4 hours of screen on time on pretty moderate use in these last three weeks. And I'm averaging somewhere around 4.5 hours on my typical use. This is actually pretty good for a smartphone. I think that smartphone battery life definitely has a lot of room to improve. You will be able to make it through about a day and a half if you're a pretty moderate user. I don't think it's great, I don't think it's terrible either though, and the 1080p screen definitely helps, but uh, it's nothing compared to the OnePlus One for sure. So here are my closing thoughts. The OnePlus 5 had many features that I loved about it. Stuff like the dash charging, which saved me countless times when I forgot to charge my phone the night before, or the stronger vibration motor, which made sure that I felt when I got a notification, or even stuff like Bluetooth 5.0, which a lot of newer phones are packing. It's all a very impressive package for this phone. Some stuff that I didn't love about it though was the chunky bezels and um, the straight off rip from Apple and just other things like the camera. I don't think that it's as good as the S8 by far. It's a very hit or miss experience. Sometimes you'll get an amazing shot and then other times you'll wonder if it was taken on a Moto E4. So I think that if you're in the market for a phone that has a very stock-like experience for this price point, there's really nothing else out here but if you have a little bit more money to spend and you really want that stock experience, the Pixel 2 is coming out soon, if you can wait, and if not, the S8 is a great smartphone and you could download a launcher on top of it, or uh, Pixel version 1 is actually still a really great steal if you don't care about bezels. So I think that the OnePlus 5 is an awesome phone. I think every year that the price continues to increase, it becomes a little bit more hard to recommend. I still think though under the $500 price range, nothing could beat this phone. So. Let me know what you think of the OnePlus 5 in the comments down below. Check out my other content right here and maybe subscribe right here. I think you guys will enjoy content coming every single week. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Bye.